So right now we're just gonna watch you. Right now you're gonna watch me and you're gonna ask questions if you have them. Okay. Anything that comes up during this, I mean, yeah, you can you can watch these videos on Schoology because I'm gonna post. But it's better because if you're watching me do it and you're like, I don't get how you did that, I can't see it or whatever, then you can ask me, okay? So feel free to ask questions either by unmuting and asking me or by um, or by trying to type them in the chat. If I see them up there, I'll do it. Okay, so who am I going to pick on for random stuff today? Amanda Hester. Are you there? Yeah, hi. hi Amanda, can you tell me um, if you can see my hand okay? I can see it, yeah. Okay, good. So you're seeing everything here. Let me hide this so it's not in the way. Okay, so for those of you guys who got your clay, you've probably already seen it. And there's three balls of clay like this. For those of you who haven't got supplies, uh, it does sound like the Monday is going to work, but I will give you final confirmation tomorrow about times. Um, it sounds like we're probably, I need 100% confirmation, but it sounds like we are not going to meet synchronously on Monday. Um, you will have time to work if you have your clay, and if you don't have your clay, you're going to come to the school to pick it up. Um, so I'll get back to you on the details with that. So it, you would either come during... Uh, the class period time, which is uh, what 12:15 to 1 1:30, we have, um, and then um, and then you could come during the office hours as well. Okay. After that, it would get left in the bookstore, and that's not been working out so well. So try to mark your calendar that you can get over to school during those time if you need your supplies. Okay, so here we go. Um, there was a lot of different ways I showed you that you could do this, um, but one of them that I, that I showed you was to use a form. So your, your homework assignment tonight, or your thing that you're going to need to do, is every supply that I pull out that's different, and remember there's a list in the contract. The rules and procedures has a list of what your extra stuff you're going to need. You're going to gather these supplies so you have them together so you can start building when you get everything else. So if you're planning on using a form, like I showed you something to press it into, you have to first find something around your house that you can use as a form. I have these glass nesting bowls and they work really, really well because there's like a smooth bottom. Sometimes you have a bowl and it has like a, um, a ring like or a recessed foot on it and that can be okay but it will leave that bump so I liked this bowl because it was um, a smooth base and it's also small because one of the requirements here is that I can only use one lump of clay so it was a nice small form for me to start if I'm planning on using a form the other thing I want to look for and I'm going to turn this sideways to show you is that I want the form to be open like this I don't want it to be straight up and down, and I don't want it to curve in like this. Otherwise, your clay won't come off the mold, so you need like an open-shaped bowl. You can choose whether you want to put the clay inside the bowl or outside of the bowl. For this demonstration, I'm going to start with outside of the bowl. And if you can't find a bowl, you really don't need one. You can also build it freely. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit, too. So. I'm going to show the outside of the bowl, and I, the first thing I need to do is I've got to put a paper towel over it, otherwise the clay is going to stick to the bowl. It doesn't matter if the bowl is plastic, glass, whatever, the clay will stick if I don't put a release agent. I like to wet the towel so that it sticks to the bowl a little bit more. I happen to have a spray bottle, which is a nice thing to have if you have one. But if you don't and you cannot find one today that you can use for water, you can use that sponge in your toolkit and you can dampen the towel with the sponge. But this water helps the paper towel stick to the form a little bit more so that it's not sliding around on you and it will also double in keeping your clay wet while you're working on it. So I'm just going to get a little wet so it kind of sticks to that bowl. Um, but like I said, your bowl itself can be plastic, glass, 
um, styrofoam, like if you have those like those disposable styrofoam bowls, um, this thing here I was thinking about using, it's just a container from a restaurant. Um, I probably would pick up this texture, which would maybe be nice. Um, and then other textures that I didn't want, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of them later, okay? So just something you can use as a mold if you want it. And then you're gonna take your clay and we're gonna start rolling coils. So I'm gonna push this to the side here and I'm gonna take off a little chunk that I'm gonna use for my first coil. Now one of the things you have to keep in mind is that the clay that you are not using, it is sitting there and it is drying out and you don't want it to. So I, if I am not rolling a coil or doing anything with this clay, I'm gonna get a plastic bag, this is my grocery bag, and I'm gonna put it in there or you can put it back in the Ziploc bag that it came in, but I need to keep that wet. So when I put it in the bag, I'm gonna actually get the bag really nice and tight and just kinda of turn it like this so there's no air in the bag and it'll be ready for me to use when I want it. So then I'm gonna start just by kinda of rolling this stuff out in my hand. Get it just kind of where I want it to be and then I'm gonna roll my coil. Now this thing that I have underneath here is that foam mat that we've been talking about you picking up. It's just a, just a little rectangle. Mine happens to be white, but there's all different colors. It doesn't matter what color it is. It just matters that you are not messing up your parents' table because I don't want them to call me and yell at me and say you messed up their table. So if you are working on a piece of cardboard or something like that, also fine. Okay, so now I'm rolling a coil and I want to point something out here. If I want this coil to be really nice and round, I'm gonna use my fingertips and I'm gonna roll all the way until I hit my palm. The clay has to be 360 degrees all the way around in order to be a nice round coil. If you roll your coils like this, they're gonna go flat. If they go flat, you can kind of like turn them up and like square them off and then roll again with longer strokes and they'll re-round themselves. Or you can crunch them up and you can start over. That's allowed too. It will tell you that if you are crunching them up and roll, using them over and over and over again, they will start to dry out. If they begin to dry out on you while you're working, then when you put them in the plastic bag, before you put them in the plastic bag, wrap, them, wrap it in a wet paper towel, not like dripping wet, but like damp paper towel. Wrap the ball in the towel and then put it in the bag and it'll soften it back up, okay? So if it's starting to get cracking or doing weird things on you. And I'm also, as I roll this coil, I'm kind of stretching it out where there's like a thick spot. I'll kind of stretch that out. So this is probably like, see it's smaller than my thumb nail there. That's about the diameter that I'm getting. You can go pretty thin with this stuff. So I'm gonna go about, which finger is it? Pinky finger, pinky finger, thumbnail, or not thumbnail, pinky nail, right? So I'm gonna go about that big with this coil. And then I'm gonna bring my mold back in here to place it on the mold. Now, one of the tools you got, and you're probably like, what the heck are we using a paper clip for? But you, there was a paper clip um, inside of your toolkit. So this is gonna be two tools, actually. And the first one we're gonna use today is gonna be the pin tool. I didn't clean this very well after my last use. Bad teacher. Um, the, this is going to be a pin tool, which is going to help us cut clay, and then we're going to use this end as a loop tool, which we'll get to in a different project. So one little paper clip is going to do a lot of things. So all I did with the paper clip, and we'll go over this again next week when you guys have your supplies, but if you don't and you have a paper clip at home, you can start. All I did is I opened it up like that so that I had one side for cutting and one side for um, scooping basically. All right, so I'm gonna take the pin tool and I'm just gonna cut off a length that I wanna start with. 
Oh, I forgot one thing. I gotta show you guys something. I made this one earlier and I'm gonna build on top of this. So this one was done in the exact same way, right? Um, but this one has already started drying out a little bit and I did that on purpose so I could show you the next step. So this piece right here, if I, I have noticed that if I tend to start with like a swirly co coil right in the middle, as it dries, it very frequently gets a crack in the center. So I call this a cookie. I'm gonna start with a cookie in the center so that it doesn't crack on me. And if, if you don't care if it cracks a little bit, then you go ahead and start with the spiral. It's okay, but it's because it's not gonna be used to hold cereal anyway. But if I don't want that cracking to happen, I'm just gonna start with a little ball of clay and then I'm gonna flatten it like this. And it's about that thick. And I'm gonna place that down. And then I'm gonna begin my design work. Now, just for the sake of moving quickly today, I'm not gonna to go to this level of detail with my design work because it takes longer, right? You guys are gonna do this, but I'm just gonna do some straight coils to get us started. So I'm actually gonna cut this a little bit longer. Gonna add this. I'm gonna use my pin tool, paper tip clip, pin tool to cut it and slice that together. I'm going to show you that again because it's a way that I could make the coil just the right length. I added the ring and then I'm going to let it go on top of this one and then I can kind of see where this one ends and cut that extra off and then kind of stick them together, right? So if you want to do designs, you can. So I could take this smaller coil here and I would make like a little spiral maybe. And I could do a row of those for decoration, but like you can see, those take longer. So for the demo, Oh, that was not a very pretty spiral. I'm going to start that one over. All right, so I could do like a row of those, and I can kind of play with this. Um, I'm going to remember to have this wrapped because I noticed it was sitting open. And then just to be quick, I'm going to finish this off with one last coil and then I'm going to show you how to loot it together. So while I'm doing this last little bit here I want to remind you of the requirements for this. You must be working with coils. I do not want you working with slabs. So if you found something that or like let's say you get to this part and you're like oh I want to put a flat piece in and you did this and took a big chunk and added it, yes, it would work theoretically, but I want you guys to stick with coils for this assignment. We're gonna do slabs next time, okay? So all coils. Does not mean that all of your coils have to show, which we'll go over in a minute, but I do want you to build this completely, completely with coils. That's requirement number one. Number two, I want you to use only one ball of clay or less. If you end up having extra, just hang on to it. But don't dig into a second ball of clay because we need it for the next project. And then you need your coils to show somewhere. You definitely want some part of this to be decorative, okay? All right, now the next tool that you're gonna want for looting, you've got choices here. So one of the things in your toolkit was a plastic knife. And this is sort of are at home what I would use at school it would be a wood tool and looting means that you're smushing it together right so I'm gonna smush this all together you can use your finger if you prefer also totally fine you also can use the serrated part of the knife 
like you're spreading butter on it, but you just want to make sure that you're going pretty deep so that these things get kind of, the clay gets bound together. Do not worry about how ugly this works right now. Smoothing comes in a minute, okay? So the other thing you have in your toolkit is that we gave you an actual, this is the real deal rib. This is a nice one. This is one of the things you're gonna have to return, um, but it's flexible and I can use this. And I'm gonna wanna stop and loot every so often because otherwise it just kinda starts falling apart on me as I'm working. And then I could keep going and at the end I'll kinda take my finger and smooth it out. So I'm not gonna keep going because um, that shows the general idea. I'm gonna kinda switch over to this one next. I am gonna show you how I smooth it out and how I get it off the mold. This one will be easy to get off the mold because it doesn't come down over the sides. Yours might be a little harder, but I'm going to show you a trick. Okay. Nobody has any questions so far? Man, I'm no, a... I don't okay. Before. Amelie, what's up? Can we do like a sculpture too? Not just like a bowl? As long as it's built out of coils. Oh, okay. You still have to build, like one of the d examples in the slideshow, we will do sculpture, but that's later. Um, for this particular unit, I'm focusing, I see Estrella, I'll get to you in one second. Um, in this particular unit, we're focusing on coils. So that, I had that cactusy looking thing in the presentation. Uh -huh. That was a sculpture, but it was built out of coils. And then the only other thing to keep in mind is that one of your requirements is that you have to show your design work. Oh, okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got it kind of smoothed out. It's not going to be perfectly smoothed out at this point. I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see that it's not perfect. It's like mostly smoothed out, but there's still some little like lumps and bumps in here. But once I get it joined and looted, then I'm going to want it to dry so I can pop it off the mold. If you just try to grab it like this, you can damage it. But since you have this towel on here, what you can do to help yourself get it off is you can just kind of pull on the towel to loosen it, and then you can flip it over and you'll get your design on the inside. Now, I also want you to notice that there's a couple of things. Because I'm using a paper towel, there's some marks from the paper towel. I've got some weird, ugly, smushy stuff happening here. This coil, I can see the seam, those kinds of things. Some stuff you can fix now, but you have to be careful because it's soft. You could very easily damage it. So what I recommend, instead of trying to fix it now, is to wait and let it get to leather hard. Now this is a tough thing for me to show. Um, but this bowl that I made earlier, I let it dry to a stage called leather hard. Here's the difference. Soft clay, it bends, right? If I am trying to hold this by the lip and it's big, it's gonna warp it. Leather hard clay looks exactly the same in terms of like color, but I can hold it. It's firm but it is not totally dried out. It has moisture left in it. So if it starts turning white, like very white white, it's getting too dry, wrap it in a damp paper towel, put it back in the bag and work on it later. It should still look like the clay does. And um, actually this particular air dry clay, oddly, it's opposite of classroom clay. Usually in the classroom it gets lighter, but this is actually getting darker as it dries. That's weird. So I would say this is, as I look at them side by side, this is a little bit lighter, and then this is a little bit darker. I've got a piece of greenware. I'll pull it out at the end to show you, but it, if it gets to the point where it's greenware, it snaps. It's like a piece of chalk. You don't want this. This feels um, leathery. That's why they call it leather hard, I guess. It feels like leathery. There's moisture in it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here and I'm just gonna show you how I can, now that it's leather hard, 
I'm going to be able to fix these things up better. Another supply, and I don't think I have it on the list actually, but it is quite handy to have, is a pencil. And this one's sharper, so I'm going to use this. So what I can do to kind of fix up some of these lumps and bumps in here is I can get in there with the pencil to kind of clean up those seams, like if they got smushed. I already fixed one of these and it looks kind of funky. I'm going to show you how to make it look a little less funny. But I can kind of go through with the pencil and clean up imperfections. And then I can also use my sponge. It has hardly got any water in it at all. But I can do this to wipe out the paper towel marks and because it's leather hard, um, it won't smoosh as easily. And then I can go back through and I can kind of like clean up stuff that doesn't look like I want it to look. Okay. Another thing I could do with this, I'm going to smooth out the lip and I could be finished here, but honestly this was only a half a ball of clay to get to this size. Um, so my intent was, and this is a, another thing you could do, is to continue to build on here. So if you want to continue to build on here, as long as it's not totally dry, you can. You just have to score and slip. How am I doing on my time? Almost out of time, so I've got to hurry. Alright, if I want to score and slip, I'm going to take that pin tool and I'm going to scratch the edge. And I would do this all the way around the whole lip and then I would just take a little water and dab it on there. I got to be careful not to smooth it out because then I'm getting rid of the rough spots and I have to go back and I have to rough it up again. But what I'm doing is I'm creating this gushy stuff on the surface of the clay that is called slip. And the slip is like the clay glue, it's the stuff that makes everything stick together. So now that it has that on it, I could take a new piece of clay a new coil and I could continue to build and it will stick. So I could build this form in, change the shape at this point because I can free build. Once I've done one coil with scoring and slipping, now this is leather hard and this last one is soft, I don't have to score and slip because I'm attaching soft to soft. So if I want to attach another coil to the soft, then I can go back to looting. You only need to score and slip when you're attaching leather hard clay to something. Okay? So you can keep building. Start it on a free form. The other thing is if you want to instead use the inside of the bowl, you just do the opposite. You put the paper towel on the inside and then you can press it down into there and try to build this way. That way your design is going to be on the outside of the bowl rather than the inside. Um, let me tell you what other things I want to show you. Oh, um, at school we have these things called bats, which are these plastic trays that you can carry your work on if they get really floppy. This one's small, so it's not that floppy, but when this one came off, it was very hard to keep uh, nice, so I used a piece of cardboard. This is actually the lid of a shoebox that I found and it just made a nice way to store the work, something that I could put it on and I could carry it around without damaging it. Um, so if you find a piece of cardboard too to carry it around, that might be a nice thing for you. Um, what else do I want to tell you about? I want to tell you how to wrap it every night. So we talked about wrapping your clay and how it will dry out if you leave it open. Same with the project. This project I wanted to get leather hard so I actually put it out on my front porch and then I set a timer so I wouldn't forget about it for every 15 minutes and I would go check on it. And after 15 minutes I flipped it over and I let the sun kind of get it dry on this side. And then if it wasn't hard enough I flipped it over and I did another 5 minutes. So I was kind of watching this as it got to leather hard. As soon as it gets leather hard though and I don't want it to change then I'm going to, if I have a spray bottle, spray it. If I don't have a spray bottle, dampen it, or 
I can also do this with my water. And this again is just an old like cottage cheese container or something. So that's another thing you guys are gonna wanna find today. Take this, wrap it in this damp towel, and then I'm gonna put it in my plastic bag. And when I put it in my plastic bag, I'm gonna squish out all of the air and tuck that end under because any air left in the bag will allow it to dry. I want this to stay exactly the same until I can get to it the next day. I'm gonna keep it like this. And then when I get to it the next day, that wet paper towel I put on it may even make it softer. So be careful with how much water you put on it. You may actually bring it back too far to soft. And if you do, then just go put it back out in the sun. And Or if you don't want to put it outside, just put it out in the living room. But set a timer because you're going to forget. And if it dries out, you're in trouble. Okay? So I wanted to tell you about wrapping that up. They kind of need a little bit of babysitting. Okay, and then I think the last thing I'm going to show you, because I'm running short on time. I'm supposed to be done in five minutes. is cleaning your tools. So you got this little sponge in your toolkit. You can just clean all of your tools with the water that you used. I took my, um, by the way, if you have duct tape at home, I was getting creative. I took my paper clip just so I'd have a longer pin tool and it wasn't so small in my hands. And I duct taped it to uh, an old pencil so that if I wanted to use this more like a pencil I could. So you're welcome to do that if you have the supplies to do so. So I clean all my tools like this and then here's the deal with this water. If there's chunks of clay in the water, scoop them out and throw them in the garbage. I would dump this water outside, like in the bushes. I wouldn't dump it down my drain. It's not terrible because you're not using that much, but it's better to not dump it down your drain. If you don't have a spot where you could dump it on a bush, then what I would do is I would leave it sit overnight and all the clay will settle down to the bottom of it. Then you could just pour off the clean water and then get the clay into the garbage can instead of um, dumping it down your drain. Because honestly, for the amount of clay we're going to use, it's probably not a big deal. But if you do dump large amounts of clay down your drain, you'll get, you'll clog your sink. Um, but we only have three pounds of clay, so I have a hard time imagining that would happen, but still, I wouldn't risk it. I'm not doing it, I'm dumping it outside. Okay. Um, I think your supplies today. Okay, so let me tell you again what your supplies. So your job today, you're gonna, you're gonna update your plan if you need to. Like if now that you've seen this and you, you're like, oh, that's a better idea, I'm gonna do this. When we meet tomorrow, I want you to have your plan written to the best that you can and then when we're in our small meetings let me switch I can switch back here um, when we're in our small meetings um, I might give you some suggestions and then you before you actually submit it you go and um, I can do this too before you might um, before we meet it should be how you want it to and then if I give you some suggestions you can go back and update it one more time before you submit submit okay um, so today I want you to update your plan if you need to and I want you to gather the supplies okay so it's plastic yeah um, so I submitted the thing in Schoology and I didn't get the um, so I don't know if I'm able to type in it or not I can go back and um, unsubmit it all right, I'll go. I'll go after. Let me make a note. I'll go back because I wasn't clear on that yesterday. That was my fault, Grace. Um, I'm going to make a note to myself to unsubmit anybody who submitted it so that you can go and make changes. Okay. Um, any other questions on that? Okay. The other thing that I want you to do today is find, I'm going to stop my recording.